Welcome to the More Than Just Mowing podcast. I'm your host, Joel Cleaver, and this is the official podcast of Jim's Mowing. If you didn't know it, it's the world's largest gardening franchise with more than 2,000 franchisees in Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. And on the podcast show, we interview franchisees, our franchisors who run the regions and manage the franchisees, and also Jim himself. So there's a lot of broad range of content, and we do encourage you, if you are researching more about Jim's Mowing, about what we do, go through those episodes. It'll give you a great sense of who we are. So without further delay, Here's today's episode. Craig Wood from Jim's Mowing Sebastopol, and you're another one of our core voucher winners. So on behalf of the Jim's Group, we want to present you with that. You've got a great customer Thank service you. rating. I had a look. And you've also got a really great story as well about why you joined Jim's Mowing and, and how you've been going. So maybe you want to just first off introduce you, yourself and um, how you got involved with the Jim's Mowing and Jim's Group. Yeah, um, my name's Craig Wood. I um, live in Ballarat and I've purchased a franchise which covers my base area is Sebastopol, but I cover all over Ballarat and the surrounding regions. Um, I joined up with Jim's, uh, went through my training block and started in August of 2021, so nearly two years. And, um, yeah, I was just looking for an opportunity to work for myself, have a bit of control around my situation financially but also lifestyle-wise. And um, it's come through really well in and that regard. Pr- and what were you doing prior to gyms, Craig? Uh, prior to gyms, I worked um, in the printing and public relations areas for around 29 years. Wow. Um, working in middle management and um, team leadership, things like that. Um, became quite jaded and burnt out by the whole corporate world and um, really tired. Um, stressed and anxious, uh, I put on a lot of weight, um, just needed something different in my life. And um, buying a gym's franchise really um, has come through as a good decision I made, yeah. Well, it's pretty tough to go from 29 years of employment to what you've done. Like, it's not easy. I think the longer you stay in employment, the harder it is to sort of pull away from it. So how was that, how was that um, early time making that transition from long-time employee to running your own business. How was it in the early days? Uh, early days, it was a big risk, I guess, financially particularly, um, and also just un- the unknown. But um, I guess I just hung on pretty ha- fast to the things Jim talked about at the um, induction and training and um, just got out there and gave it a re- red-hot go. Um, I think that's a thing when you get into this sort of thing, you've got to sort of invest yourself completely um, and uh, get your head down and get into it. And uh, it's a, it, as I said, it, it is a risk. Like anything in life is a risk. Um, but it's um, I, I think it's a pretty strong system to get involved with, um, really strong frameworks around um, how we deliver our service but also how um, it, it can pay off as an in income-wise. And how was the body in the early days? Oh, it, my body laughed at me, I'm sure. <laughs> I was crying at me and screaming at me for the first few weeks because after having a basically an office-bound job for, you know, best part of 30 years, um, moving into a job where you're on your feet doing physical stuff all day long, um, it, it was hard work, uh, but you get used to it. I was surprised how quickly I did actually get used to it and um, it's paid off because um, I've lost a lot of weight through d- doing this job. Um, my mental health is so much better because I'm burning off any um, sort of negativity I feel like, any any um, built-up stress. You sort of burn it off during the day because it's, you know, a physical job. You're out in the fresh air. Um, you're in different spots all the time. So I, I feel like it's been a really incredibly beneficial uh, change in lifestyle. I love, hearing that because, I love hearing that because it's something we don't really promote like, you know, when we, you know, obviously advertise franchises. But, yes, the mental health aspect is a big one and the um, the weight loss. Like if you are yeah. in an office worker or something and you want to lose those stubborn KGs, like you, you can't not lose them doing what you do. Like if, you, if you're not losing the weight doing what you do, you're not obviously doing it right or doing it hard enough. So Yeah, absolutely. I've lost best part of 10 kilos in the first 18 months I did. Wow. And um, and that's without really changing my diet really that much. Uh, it's just the fact you're on your feet, you're out working, um, you're clocking up easily 10,000 steps a day. Um, and at times, you, depending on how hilly you're, the ground you're working on, you could be going up and down hills, so you get a bit puffed. And But after a while, you don't get puffed because you just get used to it. And um, 
so that's been really good. My doctor is absolutely wrapped because my cholesterol levels have gone down, blood pressure has gone down, reduced a lot of medications I was on for those issues I had, and um, and I can be happy with that myself, obviously. That's, that's great to hear. And um, what do you want to talk about the services you provide in your business? Are you doing um, the full gamut of services? What do you do for customers? I do most mostly everything that Jim's mowing offers. I because of my age, I'm 53, um, I sort of limit the amount of gutter cleaning I do, but that's my choice. Um, I just, if it's in low, low hand gutters and I think I, I'm up to it, I'll do it. But that's really up to me as a franchise owner, what I do and what I don't do. Um, majority of my work is mowing, edging, and pruning, roses, hedges, all that sort of thing. That's really enjoyable work to do. Now, skill-wise, how did you find yourself doing that? Because you probably coming from a completely unrelated field into doing it in the early days. So it was something where the, you took your time or you asked your franchisor, how did you go about getting those skills as you went? Uh, I've always enjoyed working on my own garden, like doing the mowing and the pruning myself. So I've always had a bit of a uh, – sorry, bit sorry of I've always for it. felt a bit of pride in how I presented my gardens and my, my yards and things like that. So I guess I had a bit of the inbuilt sort of – knowledge at the start with i had all pretty good machinery at home but also the gym's training um, block for mowing was really helpful as well because you're learning off seasoned experienced people and um they taught me a lot um and just working with some of the other franchisees in the early stages of my time they showed me the ropes as well um so yeah you, you pick it up fairly quickly as long as you're a bit you, you pay attention to what's around you and who you're learning off. In Ballarat, I presume the grass grows a lot um, with with the with the weather, and there's a lot of good gardens up there and some nice nice houses. I presume you'd be working there every day. Yeah, there's plenty of work, that's for sure. Um, uh, the grass grows pretty green in Ballarat. It's a pretty damp, cool place. Uh, but also with that, um, you got challenges in winter with boggy ground and things getting hard and hard in summer as well. But um, you find other ways of foot f getting that income in other ways. So you offer customers other services. If you can't cut the grass, well, how about I go and do some weeding for you or I do a bit of pruning or hedging or um, things like that, just general tidying up around the place. And um, if you've got a good relationship with your customer base, they're open to that conversation and often it'll it'll work. That's great to hear. And the um, training itself, so you did, did you – because when you started, I think I don't know if I can't remember if it was still lockdowns and stuff going on. Did you do it in person or at online? Uh, well, my training was a bit unusual in that it was all in person until about the second day of our mowing <laughs> training, and we went into lockdown. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, lovely Premier Daniel Andrews. I remember and that. And so <laughs> I did the second half of my training online. So it was mostly all videoed and yeah. you know, learnt that way. Um, How's the in-person experience then for you? In person was wonderful. Yeah, great. You'd meet, rub shoulders and chatted over meal times and morning tea, afternoon tea, etc. Uh, with other potential franchisees around you and um, had one-on-one -on -one with Jim himself and with the trainers and um, it was really beneficial being there. I think it's, if, if I was to encourage anyone, it would be be at the training. But also, I found also having experienced remote learning with it as well, it was Good too, yeah. And with the um, training itself, was there anything you took away from those? Because there's a lot of information in those days, but was there things that you took away that worked in your business or you applied? Um, yeah, some of the training around um, managing your time was really good. I've, I still even from time to time think of what they told me around planning um, when you're slotting in your jobs for the week, how you um, drive around through the jobs, how you prioritise certain jobs over others. Um, so that was really beneficial and I took away a lot from that. Um, also just about being open to learning as well. I'm currently doing a certificate too in horticulture. Oh, great. So um, I, that stuck with me, the, the, the idea that you're always going to be learning something and it's good to know more than just the surface level stuff. Oh, the horticulture stuff is great. You know, I know Des does the introduction to it and he's real passionate about it and um – it's just having that skill where you can walk into a customer's home. If they know what their garden is, then you can go, oh, yeah, I can see you've got hydrangeas or I see you've got this, I see you've got this. Like it just yeah. demonstrates that knowledge straight away. 
Yeah, that's right. And I can tell them I've, well, hopefully in a few months, I can tell them I've got a certificate to horticulture. Of, I know the difference between a weed and plant. <laughs> I can tell them, oh, no, you've got to get rid of that or yeah. when's a good time to prune this? Um, and from that, they ask me a lot of questions now. So it's been really that's, good. That's great to hear. Um, in regards to um, the business and how it's married up to what your expectations are, has it exceeded it or has it been about what you expected or how have you found it? I've found it pretty much met my expectations. I've got to say it's got a lot more flexibility in it than I expected and I'm still getting used to that flexibility after being in a, a rigid corporate office environment for so many so many years, <laughs> probably far too long than I really wanted, wanted yeah. to. But um, I found that there's a lot of flexibility in that I think, oh, well, in a few weeks' time I want to head into state for a wedding or, you know, go to the footy in Adelaide or something like that. I can plan to take the Friday off to drive over and um, it's not a problem whatsoever. I make the decision. I plan my customer around that. Um, if you've got the good relationship with the customer, they're flexible as much as I am. So um, that's been really good. Probably the biggest bonus of it is that flexibility you have with your lifestyle. Are you a Crows fan? Are you a Port Adelaide? Or? No, no, I'm a Hawthorne supporter. Hawthorne fan, okay, right. Yeah, good mate in Adelaide's like Adelaide man, so sometimes go over the footy. That's interesting you said that in regards to flexibility. You didn't know what to do with the flexibility or the lifestyle. But it's good, as you said, you've got that there. You just have that knowing that that you can, whereas in the corporate environment where you're 9 to 5 or yeah. you know, you're driving 8 to 6 and you just don't have yeah. that. Whereas I used to fill in a form requesting time off for leave <laughs> and um, all that stuff's now a distant memory for me. Yeah. I enjoy the flexibility uh, if I want to. If I've got a doctor's appointment, whatever, I can make it any time of the day and just work around it. It's, it's simple. And, um, and, I mean, was, this would have been great when I had young kids when they are in school and I would have been able to be there a bit more for them. Um, mm. However, um, it's now I have that flexibility now with other things with my kids, so that's good. That's great. And um, I was going to say the... Um uh, customers, misconceptions from customers about Jim's mowing. What's some stuff when you talk to customers that maybe they don't understand about the Jim's mowing service or the Jim's mowing offer or what you can do? I, I guess one of the things people say to me when they say about Jim's is they, well, well there, there are bonuses that Jim's have a, have a reputation and a name and that the customers know that they might pay a little bit more than a maybe a lot of other people, but they know they're getting a particularly structured service. So um, that's a real bonus to it. And But but some people think we're overpriced or a bit much or why why are you charging $20 more than an independent mm. contractor? And I will just say, well, you know what we're going to get. We get trained. We, we've, got, we've got a certain level we've got to meet. <clears throat> and um, they know that um, there's some sort of backing behind just me they've got a they've got a uh, uh avenue to gr uh, air any grievances they might have with me um so it's not just me they're dealing with they're dealing with a bigger structure so they I, I i guess i can explain to them that there's um more to it than just me i can offer a lot more that's a good point you bring up craig so how do you is that how you generally deal with the price objection because we are you know we're not going to be like the $20 mow or the $30 no. guys chucking the back of the trailer. We are a good service for a good price. So how do you advise that franchisees or just deal with that sort of maybe that price objection or how do you go about it? I talk to them about the fact that it's, it's their decision, the customer's decision. They I don't, don't have to get me to do the work for them. But a lot of the independent uh, contractors aren't insured. They don't have, say, police checks or working with children checks. They don't have that that um, assurance that they're dealing with someone they can trust, or someone at least who's been <laughs> had the once over to make sure they're okay to be working in their property. So I tell them about that. I tell them the f about the fact that I can provide something in a systematic way, uh, all the way from the way I quote through the way I deliver an invoice, um, that they have the avenues all the way through to, to, to stop me and say, 
I like this, but I don't like what you're doing there. And I'll talk to them and I'll, I'll work with them and do the very best I can for them. And, and you're not going to go missing. That's the main thing as well. And you're not going to go missing, which no, is the one not. I hear a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I hear from people who get me to work for them that they find some guy just I can't get in touch with him anymore. So I really, and then it all comes back to what Jim said in in his initial training is that your number one priority through the whole experience of being a Jim's franchisee is the relationship with your customer, and that. If you've got that down and you and they trust you, um, the, the opportunities for income and work are just huge. Absolutely. And I was going to say the um, – yeah, and like with customers, like they get burnt once by an independent or whatever, they know that, oh, I'm not going to do that again and I'm going to be happy to pay for the – they have to sometimes, unfortunately, learn the hard lesson to then realise I've got to pay for a you know a good provider and the trust and the name and these different things. Yeah. Yeah, cool. yeah. The old saying goes you pay what – Pay for what you get for, you know. Ab- yeah, absolutely. And I was going to say as well, with your equipment, what equipment do you recommend, or do you find that you use in your business? Everyone loves hearing what our guys use. So, what do you use in your business, Craig? Uh, most of my handheld, or my, my number one mower is Honda. A lot of my handheld equipment is Honda as well. Uh, I re- highly recommend if people were interested in going into a franchise, if they. But at some point early on, they should get hold of a ride-on mower and definitely go for a zero turn, and I use a Toro zero turn. They are a little bit more expensive, um, but they are so reliable and um, do a great job. Absolutely. And so you're using Honda for the handheld and the mower, which is I think the most popular mower our guys use in the Toro ride-on, which is I don't really hear many guys using the Toro. I think it's generally like walkers and hustlers and stuff, but the Toro is a really good quality piece of kit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I was going to say now, with um, uh, looking back on it, what advice would you have given yourself in the early days to maybe make your life a bit easier as a franchisee? If someone's starting out, or you know, what could you maybe tell them in the early days to to, to look out for? Don't rush. In your early days, don't rush. Just ease your way into it. I probably rushed a little bit and worried about income too much. It will happen. Um, especially those first couple of weeks, you've just got to take deep breaths and take your time and don't expect it all to happen at once. And another thing is you will make mistakes. Um, I made numerous mistakes. Still do at times and you learn by those. Um, and if anyone says they don't make mistakes, I don't, I don't think they're being truthful to themselves. Uh, you, you do make mistakes. And as long as you learn by them and understand why things happened, um, then... Um, you'll, you'll develop stronger knowledge and mistakes cost money too. That's another thing that um, you've got to understand. Um, yeah, it's, it's just being aware that things will happen as long as you learn by them and move on, um, you'll be fine. Yeah, it's a good point. Everyone makes mistakes and it's sometimes it's the, it's the best teacher. You can't. Yeah. You know, you can't really learn and progress if you're not making mistakes. It's quite funny. We, I manage the mulling socials and you see a lot of independence and they're always having a crack about, you know, these various things like they don't make any mistakes, which is definitely not true from what, what you would know from dealing with customers who deal with maybe come to you after having a bad experience. So it's the only way you can definitely learn. Yeah. Now, what's your plan for your business moving forward, Craig? Are you just happy doing what you're doing at the moment as a sole trader? Are you looking to expand or what, what are your goals? Mostly I'm happy to work for myself and by myself. I don't really have plans to expand as in with employees or um Put on a uh, sorry, I'll start that again. That's right. Put on an offsider sort of thing, yeah. Yeah, I don't really have plans to expand in that regard. I do have plans to um, streamline my customer list to be a certain type of property, um, but that will take time. It's about um, culling and and making sure I've got customers who who are reliable. Um, financially for me, as in we'll pay on time, people who um, I connect well with and that um, appreciate what I do, but more importantly, that um, I can deliver exactly what they want. So I don't have any concerns as, as far as losing them or or anything like that. That's a great point, yeah, because you can shape your business the way you want it. So, you know, yeah. having that, as you said, the customers you want, the types of properties, and if you want to do a split or something or you know, whatever you want to do, that's the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. 
Now, um, Craig, thank you very much for your time today. And I just yes. want to, again, just thank you for doing being a star franchisee. I'm glad you talked about the mental health and the fitness component of being a Jim's Mowing mm. franchisee. It's, it's quite often understated, but it's definitely a main benefit. I meet guys a lot who um, you know, 65 or six, in their 60s who have been doing it for 20 years and they look like they're 45. So you look very yeah. young, mate. So it's keeping you young. <laughs> and um, But, yeah, so on behalf of us as well, two nights to stay in any – um, a core hotel. There's like 1,400 of them around Australasia. So that's for you and yep. your partner. Thank you. 50, 50% of your dining bill. There's all these other benefits as well. So, ha, ha, well, behalf of us, thank you very much for doing what you do and for joining us Thanks, today Joel. on the Jim's, and Jim's Mowing Podcast. We really appreciate it. Thanks, Joel. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Craig. Thank you for listening to the episode of the More Than Just Mowing Podcast by Jim's Mowing. If you do need help with your local gardening expert, please give us a call at 131546 for Australia. 0800 454 654 for New Zealand or head to jimsmowing.com.au or jimsmowing.co.nz. If you liked what you heard, please make sure you leave us a review as well. Wherever you consume your podcast, we appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.